What's up you guys? In this video, I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to do a data science project on honestly, one of the hottest buzzwords in the entire world. Yes, NFTs. Now, if you've been hiding under a rock the past year, NFT stands for non-fungible token. And basically they are digital assets stored on the blockchain and over 22 billion was spent last year on purchasing NFTs alone, which if you don't know, that is a lot of money. And in this world, in the NFT world, there's all sorts of scams, pump and dumps and rag to riches stories, back to rags again sometimes. It's kind of a crazy world to be a part of. For instance, this penguin collection started around 0.1 ETH, which is about $300 and rose to an average price of five ETH, which is about 15 $20,000 only to have the value drop back down to one ETH or $3,000. So crazy ride, crazy project. And regardless of if you think NFTs are all scams or if you think they're bad for the environment or you love them, one thing is really obvious and that is there is a lot of money to be made. And where there is money to be made, data can help us make it. So I set off on a journey to make as much money as I possibly could by flipping NFTs according to a machine learning algorithm. And the result? One eternity later. Well, I, uh, that's, I, that's, that's what I want, I wanted to do, but uh, it turns out it's a little bit harder than you might think. So instead, I just made a data science project I could put on my data science portfolio, and I decided I'd love to share that with you, so that's what we're gonna talk about instead. So here is the business use case. NFTs are just collectible digital assets whose price is pretty much based off of speculation and who might pay more for this in the future, but they're also kind of like memberships and they're like getting into a certain club and stuff like that as well. And that's to go to say that these clubs are all about the term community, which basically just means they help each other out and give each other alpha, which alpha is hot tips basically in the NFT world. You're basically like, oh, this project might take off or you should check out this project or like do this with your cryptocurrency, yo, stuff like that. And really projects take off because someone starts to pay a higher price than the current market is offering. So others raise their price because they realize they can make more money, which makes the whole project raise and look like it's actually gaining momentum, which causes even more people to come and buy, which causes even more of an increase in the price. And basically that just goes on and on and the circle goes on until you have a really big expensive project. You get the picture. So the rise of projects is very communal and very based upon groups of individuals with lots of money who see an opportunity to make more money. These individuals are really important. That's gonna be a big part of our analysis. So I decided to see if there is a way I could identify some of these individuals with lots and lots and lots of money. By the way, they're referred to as whales by the NFT community because they're big, right? And see what they were holding to see if any of those projects were currently cheap but might take off in the future and help me retire before the young age of 27. So to do that, we needed data and let's go see it. Now you'd think that NFT data would be pretty easy to get, right? Because it's like all recorded on the blockchain and yeah, blockchain so cool. Wrong, it's so hard to get. It's actually super hard. And if you guys want me to make a video highlighting all of the ways to get NFT data that I know how of, let me know down in the comments down below. One of the most complete NFT data sets was created by a small company called Moonstream. Shout out Moonstream. Where they scraped over 7 million NFT transactions on the blockchain and stored it in a SQLite database and have posted it up on Kaggle. And I'll have the link to that data set in the description down below. This data set is a bit outdated now, but it's one of the richest and easiest to get in terms of NFT data sets. So it works for our business use case. Once I installed it, time to whip out that handy dandy Python and get coding. You'll be able to get everything that I coded by scrolling down, seeing that subscribe button and hitting it as hard as you can and then finding the link to the GitHub repo down below in the description. But make sure you hit the subscribe button because I, uh, I wrote a script that won't let you access my GitHub without being a subscriber. To the code. Here we are inside of the code. I'm inside of Spider and I'm be programming in Python. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have the SQLite database. I'm choosing the NFTs one from the Kaggle that we talked about previously. So you can see that I have that downloaded right there inside of my file explorer. Next, we we'll wanna connect to that. We use SQL3, so I need to import that and connect to the SQLite and start a cursor. Once I'm starting the cursor, I use pandas read SQL query. So I need to import pandas 
and I'm going to start reading different parts of the database just so I can make sure that I understand it. So what I start with is getting a list of the five biggest projects and sorting by the uh, total volume after grouping by the NFT address. Hello, test it, okay. Note that I did have to join the transfers and the NFT table here, and I did have to take the transaction and divide it by this big number. For some reason, it stored huge numbers on uh, terms of the blockchain. That first data frame will give us the top five. We have ArcBots, ArtBlocks, Board Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, MeBits, and Loot. And here is how much volume they've done and the NFT contract. So after I found the top five, I created a little dictionary that would basically get you from the address to the name. Scroll down here, also made a tuple with some of the contracts as well. This is getting a list of all the NFT projects. We can go to all project names, see what that looks like. This is quite big, but here's all the different options. There's the Doge Pound, there's characters, there's, there's so many, I think there's 7,000 or something, like 9,000 different ones. Chinese ones looks like NFT play, stuff like that. So that was just for fun. Made a dictionary to map all of them just in case I needed it. Now, what I did next was take a look at the, um, the kind of the, the distinct amount of NFT projects that and the owner from, from the current owners. This is another table that has all the current owners where NFT address is in the contracts. And as a reminder, contracts is the top five. So basically, I am looking at the, the top three people that own all of these projects or own a, a good chunk of these projects, grouping by the owner and the number of projects. So let me show you what that looks like. Top N, let's go here, top N owners list. Basically, this particular wallet owner, this particular wallet owner, and this particular wallet owner own five out of the five top projects. So these people are probably pretty rich because those are pretty expensive projects. And I, I deemed them as people, people of interest, basically. So those are the, the people that we're starting with, those five people. And we're going to go ahead and look through all of the NFTs that they own. So going to top projects, there's 115 different uh, projects that they own. And I counted how much they own collectively. So they have 44 of this project, 39 of this project, 21 of this project. And basically, we've got a list of 115 projects to look at and to analyze. So then what we're going to do is pull all of the NFTs from those projects, right? Because in the previous one, we just had a list of how many and stuff like that. So pull all of the owners, all of the NFTs from all of those pro projects. And there we go. We have this big table right here uh, that is 13,000 rows, it looks like. All NFTs in top projects. Now we have the NFT address, the token ID, and the owner. Okay, and with that, we can create something called an edge table. This is really useful when you're doing network analysis, which is basically what we're trying to do is see like, oh, who owns what and stuff like that. So this is when you're doing an edge table, you're basically, I'll show you what the end result looks like, the edge table. You're basically looking at the, the left and the right, and I call the left source the right target, and the weight is how much is owned by, by both people. So, for instance, this is like almost like a Venn diagram. So there's this project called Hall of Fame Goat Lodge, and there's a project called Star Sailor Siblings. Star Sailor Siblings has a bunch of owners. Hall of Fame Goat Lodge has a bunch of owners. But how many people do they share in common? How many owners have both? And so you can look at like, for instance, here's Annie Monkeys. You know, there's 60 in each type of thing, it looks like. Um, but it must be one person probably. But like for instance, Blaze Cats, 9021 Collective, they have 100 in common, stuff like that. So basically you're looking at how many people or how many NFTs actually really are, um, are owned both in that middle section of, of the Venn diagram. So we take the address one, the address two, and then we're counting the total rows. Where we're doing an inner join, it's like a self join, right? Because we have basically two of the same table, do an inner join on the owner is equal to the owner and then filter out any duplicates, group by NFT1, group by NFT2, and it looks like I did filter where it had to be at least 50. So I just wanted the ones where we had a lot, right? And with this edge table, we can do a lot of cool things. Um, I basically end up renaming some stuff right here, drop some of the NANs, um, rename once again, 
Uh, but then we can start creating visualization. So using network, which once again is from this library up here, PyViz network, we can make this really cool interactive uh, network. Um, and basically you do that step by step. You first just generate it, and then you go through the edge data and add the node, the next node, and then the edge. The edge is what connects two nodes. And uh, then I also added some uh, naming on it so you could basically see who owns what, and it made this really, really, really pretty graph right here, which is like interactive and basically lets you show the bigger the size of the node, the more people are involved. So for instance, CryptoPunks has quite a few, but if you zoom in here, you can see that the lines are not even thickness. So for instance, this line right here is not as thick as that line right there. And so the, the thick of the line represents that that particular edge has more owners. And so this will kind of give you an interesting view of the NFT world and how different projects are related. You notice things like Mutant Ape Yacht Club is kind of one of those key ones that indicates these two different like clusters, which is kind of interesting. Um, you can notice that Treeverse and Arcade NFT aren't nearly like those are kind of outliers. Anyways, you can do a lot of different analysis with this and really take it to a whole next level. So there you have it. That's an intro to doing some NFT analysis using the Moonstream data set. Pretty cool graph we made, if I do say so myself. And network analysis, there's so much we can do. We can figure out which one has the highest connectivity, which one has the most betweenness, and is like the most important for those two different like uh, clusters that we saw. There's a lot of different ways that you could take this. And so please go ahead and fork the GitHub repo. Once again, that is in the description down below that you can only access if you have subscribed to my channel. Just kidding about that, but not really, but kind of. Um, I appreciate all you guys watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.